I know the fawns are sweet, they're cute, and when they first when they first raise up, they're just like dogs, they're like pets, like a cat, but they grow up. He was just a big baby until something happened when I stepped through. I don't know what was in his mind, but his mind snapped and he went from being a baby to he wanted to kill me. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. He wanted to kill me. Domesticated white-tailed deer pose considerable threats to humans. Considerable problems can arise when you have any wild species that is familiar with humans. White-tailed deer being such a large animal, when they become tame, they're rehabilitated, they tend to not be afraid of humans, and there's many, many times when we see that individuals are injured by particularly buck white-tailed deer during the breeding season. This can result in, in goring. Um, it, some, some individuals are killed by tame white-tailed deer. And at the end of the day, there's really no good that comes from having any sort of white-tailed deer as pets or any other wildlife. Uh, the buck that got me, his mother had been killed by a car, and a lady picked it up on the side of the road, lived in an apartment, kept it for about a week, and then decided that, hey, this thing is going to grow up and I can't keep it in an apartment. The first couple weeks of life, a fawn does not spend much time with mother. It is in the best interest of that fawn to bed down and remain hidden from any sort of predator. After about two or three weeks, they will start to spend more time with, with the doe. But during those first two weeks, people often find fawns that are laying there alone in the grass and, and misconstrue that as it being an orphaned deer. It is not an orphan fawn, but rather mother's probably within a couple hundred yards close by somewhere. And by picking up those fawns, we're actually taking them away from mother and we are orphaning them ourselves. I opened the gate, stepped through. He was standing undoubtedly against the fence right behind me because he caught me up under the legs and he just carried me off down to the, this tree or stump one. I couldn't tell you which one he put me against. And I had a hold of his horns and that's when the horn, one horn got me right here. Went in, went in behind my eye, cut the optic nerve to this eye, went through my sinuses and through my skull and actually stuck in the edge of my brain. That one came, I got that pulled out. And when I did, I got turned around. For some reason, he kind of picked me up. I got turned around and I backed up and we backed up, we hit right at the gate and the gate was still open. And when I hit the fence, I rolled through the gate and pulled, the, pulled it shut. Deer harm people both with their hooves and with their antlers. Um, bucks will commonly harm with their antlers, but both does and bucks will often stand up on their hind legs and flail people with their front hooves, which can lead to serious injury, head injuries, um, body injuries, broken bones, that sort of thing. And I didn't know then that I had a hole through this arm, one through my rib cage in my lung, uh, one in my hip, one in my thigh and one across the bottom of my leg. People tend to put human qualities or needs or associate those needs with wildlife, but nothing could be further from the truth. You know, keeping wild animals inside or in a cage or pen is absolutely contrary to their needs and desires. It's unfair to the animal. Well, I dropped the, the latch on the gate, got over and sat down, and that's when I realized that I sat down for a second to see what was going on. I couldn't see this side because I knew I had blood all over it. And I looked down and I had blood running down the driveway and I thought, I gotta go call 911. Probably the two most commonly encountered um, pet wildlife are raccoons and deer, um, both of which are you know, cute when they're young, but they grow up and become unmanageable. The best thing to do, I hate to say it, but if you see a fawn laying there and it's dying, you just have to walk off and leave it. I know I will. Well, very simply, animals that are raised in captivity become acclimated to humans. They lose their natural flight tendencies. They uh, lose out on natural behaviors. White-tailed deer and other wildlife species survive through a dominance hierarchy, and they will defend resources. They will defend their personal space, and when they are feeling threatened in some form or fashion, they will go on the offensive. Now, I don't know what snapped, what caused it, because there was nothing changed in here. And, uh, you don't need to have a captive deer. I think everyone likes wildlife, enjoys being around it, so it's a, it's a natural connection to think that it would make a good companion or pet. We tend to think that rehabilitation is a good thing, that we're saving lives and, and setting those animals out. 
but in reality, approximately 95% of animals that are rehabilitated or in captivity in some form or fashion die following the release into the wild. So when they return to the wild, they have trouble feeding themselves, uh, evading predators, uh, avoiding traffic, uh, things like that. In these cases, uh, those type of animals that have been kept in captivity, euthanization is the only option. They are dangerous. And I did not know how dangerous they could be until this happened. But uh, now, the rest of my life, when I wake up, I'm going to see half the world, because this half is gone. One situation that most people don't realize when we take animals out of the wild is the possible transfer of diseases. When we move wildlife, we move every parasite, virus, bacteria that they have as well. People need to understand that dogs or cats or other domestic animals have had rabies vaccines developed over many years. There are no approved rabies vaccines for possums or raccoons or other wild animals. I did not realize that it was against the law to keep it, but it is, and it's not only that, it's for your own protection. Alabama laws prohibit the private ownership or possession of wildlife such as deer or raccoons. I am facing some pretty tough consequences. There's a lot of animal welfare groups out there that are not really in favor of hunting, but we all tend to agree on this, that wildlife is best left to the wild. Uh, there's no place for wildlife inside someone's house or home or in a pen. Uh, it's contrary to the needs and desires of that wildlife species. Humane Society of the U.S. has an excellent website or uh, webpage uh, where they have their policy statement um, on their stance on pet wildlife or captive wildlife. The Wildlife Freshwater Fisheries Division is tasked with uh, uh, resolving these issues with people that have pet wildlife or wildlife in captivity. Uh, oftentimes, uh, options are very limited as far as reintroduction to the wild, uh, and we receive a lot of criticism for that. But first and foremost, our main concern always is public safety.